Hello. Let's talk about the one. I'm Eric Steinhardt. You can learn more about me on my website, ericsteinhardt.com. We start with nothing, absolute nothing, blankness, darkness, not some kind of shadowy stuff, but just the absence of all beings. And this is negation. Negation. Nothingness is negative, pure negativity. And the nothing negates itself. And in this self-negation, boom, this has to be the beginning of being. And we talked about this as the zero. The self-negation of nothingness is the zero. And we referred to, for instance, Charles Sanders Peirce and uh, Dean William Inga's interpretation of Plotinus, the Plotinian zero, the non-being that negates itself and somehow makes being be. And that's the one. Right? Out of the self-negation of non-being, there emerges the one. The one somehow comes from this self-negation of non-being. The self-negation of the zero makes the one. But the one's not God. It's not that guy up in the sky, uh, up overhead, above you. That's not the one. The one's not God. God is a person, so God's a rational moral agent. God is a mind. And as you can see in the picture, God is male, God has racial features, he's Caucasian. Uh, the one has none of these properties. The one has no human properties at all. And it certainly does not have the properties of intelligence or mentality or consciousness or anything like that. What does Plotinus say about the one? Well, first of all, what does he say about God? God usually refers to the divine mind in Plotinus or other Platonists. And Plotinus says, for when you think of the one as mind or God, it is more. Right? The mind, the divine mind, the noose, is not the one. Uh, Plotinus devotes several Aeneids to talking about that very fact. The one has no mentality. It's prior to mentality. And we also have to bear in mind that Plotinus was a pagan. The one is not the Christian God. Plotinus was not trying to be a Christian. He didn't want to be a Christian. The one is something else. It's not God. How do we think about the one? We want to modernize and naturalize ancient pagan thought to make it consistent with modern logic, mathematics, and science. This means no mind-body dualism, no theism, no woo, and we're going to start with logic. When we talk about this self-negation of non-being, right, this is logical. Negation is logical. Zero and one, like binary numbers, these are logical concepts. So the self-negation of zero makes the one. And if zero is non-being, one has to be somehow connected with being. We can draw a little line here, a symbolic illustration of this relationship, that the line is the distinction between being and non-being, right? Zero non-being on the bottom, and somehow being on the top, above this horizon of being or ground of being. Now, the one is the earth, or symbolized by earth. The one is like the root of a tree. Plotinus uses this kind of metaphor many, many times. Or it's like a seed, or it's like a spring from which all rivers flow, right? Or the one is like the earth that holds the root, the root of some kind of great world tree. So we can use the earth to symbolize the one. This is the old-fashioned symbol for Earth. I've colored it green, and we can use that as a symbol. And if we put the Earth above the water, uh, we had said in an earlier video that the non-being is symbolized by water, the blue downward-facing triangle. So we've got some symbolism here that we can use to poetically or artistically represent these abstract logical concepts. What does the one do? The one generates. Plotinus says, that which stands as the ultimate source of everything is not a thing, but is distinct from all things. It is not a member of the totality of beings, but the origin of their being. Plotinus says, in order that being may exist, the one is not being, but the generator of being. Again, he says, for since the nature of the one is generative of all things, it is not any one of them. The one is not any being among beings. On the contrary, the one is being itself. Things exist, but existence is not a thing. The one's not a thing. The one is being itself. It is not a being among beings. The one generates. Right? Plotinus always says this over and over again. There's the one being itself above non-being. 
that line there between the zero and the one, and out of the one, the one generates. What does it generate? Well, being itself generates the beings. But does it generate the divine mind? Plotinus often seems to say the one generates the divine mind. Not on a modernized paganism. That can't be right. Minds are very complex, but the one is simple. The one has no mentality, and the divine mind has infinite mentality. To make sense of what Plotinus is saying, the simple and non-mental one has to be infinitely far away from the infinitely complex and infinitely mental divine mind. The divine mind has to come at the end of an enormously long, infinitely long, gradual evolutionary sequence of increasingly intelligent, increasingly uh, mentalistic minds. The divine mind comes last. Now, Plotinus, of course, didn't say that, but if we naturalize Plotinus and modernize Plotinus, we have to break up the old texts and rearrange them in new ways. So let's talk about being itself. We're going to start with logic here. The American logician Willard Van Orman Quine, there he is in his passport photo on the left, talked about being in his essay on what there is. He said, to be is to be the value of a bound variable. Now, that's a slogan about the being of beings. All right? It's not a slogan about this being or that being. It's a slogan about being itself. It's kind of an axiom that defines being itself, defines what it means to be. This is the existential quantifier. That's what uh, Quine is talking about. And let's look at it. Right? If we say Socrates exists, we translate that into there exists something that is Socrates, uh, a little more formalization with logic. There exists some x such that x is Socrates. Right, uh, And you're going to see how that gets into this little existence of X thing. There exists X. X is Socrates. X equals Socrates. And there it is. There exists X. X equals Socrates, where the exists is the backwards E, the existential quantifier. And the existential quantifier is what gives being to the beings. The existential quantifier symbolizes being itself, just like we used Earth to symbolize being itself. So we can use the existential quantifier, backwards E, for being itself. Right? So being itself gives being to the beings, as the existential quantifier gives being to the values of its bound variables. And there, Socrates is the value of the variable x, and the variable x is said to be bound to that existential quantifier, to the backward z. That's what we get by writing the backward z followed by the x. The x is bound to the quantifier. Being itself gives being to the values of that variable. The one is the existential quantifier. Boom! The self-negation of non-being generates the existential quantifier. And there it is, the existential quantifier is being itself above non-being. Of course, this is symbolic, right? This is ways of depicting or representing the one in its relation to non-being, in its relation to generation. The one doesn't look like this. This is a platonic image, something you could see on the walls of the cave at the bottom of the divided line. It's an image. It depicts a logical structure. So, oh, a little interference there. But our question is, what exists? The existence of x, what? Question mark. Question mark. It's confused. It's blurry, mixed together. What exists? The one is simple, right? The one is original. The one is self-sufficient. Plotinus says all these things over and over again. The one is independent. Every being depends on the one, but the one depends on no being. This is asymmetric, an asymmetric dependency relation. So there does not exist any being on which the one depends. There exists some original being. What if we want to talk about that? If, there, if the one is generative, then there has to exist some original being. The one has to create something or emanate something. So there exists some original being. There exists some x such that x equals the original being. Now, the original being is going to resemble the one. Coming directly from the one, it's got to be most like the one. So the original being is also simple and independent. Putting this together, there exists some original being such that there does not exist any being on which it depends. Right? It's going, the simple being is going to be like the one in terms of its independence. There exists some x such that for all y, x does not depend on y. x is the simple original being, right? For any other y, any other being, 
x does not depend on that y. Now, holes depend on their parts. So the original being x has no parts. So we're going to say there exists some x such that for all y, y is not a part of x. Parthood can be modeled as the subset relation among sets. There exists some x such that for all y, y is not a subset of x. Now this is leading us a little deeper into the logic. Subsets are defined in terms of members. S is a subset of T means that every member of S is a, is a member of T. And the subset relation depends on the membership relation. So the membership relation is the simplest dependency relation. It's even simpler than the part-whole relation. So if we want to say that x, the original being, has this independence, then we're going to say there exists some x, the original being, such that for all y, y is not a member of x. And this leads to the consequence that the original being x is the empty set. How does the empty set emerge from the one? That's a problem to think about next. But when we think about the empty set and the set theoretic hierarchy, we can think of that as emerging up into the air. We've got water at the bottom, the line between being and non-being, earth above the line that separates being from non-being, and now we have abstract objects like the empty set filling up the air. This is symbolism, right? It's an image, it's a platonic image, and we're going to use this imagery. It's going to develop into a full-blown image, a Platinian image. There's the Platinian image of the tree. Uh, you've got the water of non-being there, the ocean, the abyss of non-being, the zero, and then the island of being itself that emerges from the ocean. The sky of abstract objects illustrated by those concentric lines rising higher into the sky. The tree, the tree of concrete objects flourishing there. Uh, generated out of the one, the stars in the sky, and of course the sun. This is all part of a Platinian or pagan image, and we're going to develop it. Thanks very much. I'm Eric Steinhardt. You can learn more about me at ericsteinhardt.com. Thank you very much.